morning, this is Miss Amanda and Miss Stephanie. We're going to be doing vital signs today as skill. Okay, Miss Stephanie, if you can um, yourself straight, we're going to do uh, temperature. So thermometer, there are multiple thermometers throughout. Um, this is the type of thermometer that would go right in the ear and they come with little covers or we can have temperature dots. These are in some facilities. Nowadays, they most likely will have something for COVID related thermometers. I can show you what these look like. These have to be under the tongue. And they stay there for about 60 seconds. And then you read it. The dots will, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it just looks like this, it goes underneath the tongue, and then the dots will light up and they have all the numbers um, on the sides of them. That's 60 seconds, and then you can see that. Pulse oximeter goes on an unpolished finger. to wait for a correct wavelength. So right now it's saying good wavelength. Now we have 98% for pulse ox and we have 74 beats per minute. Before when it was beeping, it was telling me that her pulse ox was low, but I didn't have that nice wavelength. So it's very important to not get concerned unless you see the wavelength and if it's going up you can even tell the patient take some deep breaths for me okay if rather if the patient isn't sitting up the right way or maybe slouched over or maybe it's the fact that um, the this is running out of battery are their fingers cold or do they have any kind of um, nail polish now we're going to check yep a radial pulse and then our blood pressure. So for blood pressure, I want the arm out this way, okay? Because it's going to bring the brachial artery out. When I check a pulse, I want to put the palm down because it'll take the radial pulse and it'll bring it down. So up to bring the brachial pulse forward, down to bring the radial pulse out. So we're gonna have her rest her hand the radial pulse. We're not going to take a pulse with our thumb because that has a natural pulse to it. I look on my clock and I count for 15 seconds. And then I take that and I multiply it by four. Okay, now I'm going to do a blood pressure. So when the patient takes the blood pressure and you're taking the blood pressure, you need to make sure that you have the right cuff size. Make sure that the patient does not have their legs crossed, their ankles crossed, that will increase the blood pressure. And if they have any kind of shirt on, they have a long sleeve shirt, you don't wanna pull it all the way up because that can add another restriction. So either if it's thin enough, you keep it down, or you might ask them to take and remove their sleeve and kind of just give you their arm, okay? Again, we need to make sure the cuff fits their arm because if it's too small, it will be too high of a blood pressure reading. If the cuff is too big for a small arm, then they'll get a low blood pressure reading, okay? You're going to see your brachial artery line up on your cuff. You want to palpate the brachial artery, yep, and then put that line right where the patient's cuff is. You're going to have your meter and your ball and spin, okay? So your meter is going to be, you'll see it goes by 20s, and your ball has to, your spin has to be closed. You'll hear it close and open. What I like to do is I hold the spin 
the ball and the spin between my fingers and I close it and I pump up asking the patient what's your usual blood pressure if they say oh it's 200 over 70s or oh, I'm usually one teens over 70s then you don't have to go too too high but make sure you're covering enough to capture that first systolic so when you're looking at your meter you're going to go all the way up and you're going to actually if you hold pressure and spin very slowly remove the, the air you're going to see your meter come down and start kind of hitting like this. You're going to see it notching. When it starts, sure, yeah, we could do that. When it starts, that's your systolic. When it stops, that's your diastolic. And you'll hear those as we add the stethoscope. So we're going to come a little further, come close up. So this way you can see it. Okay, so we're closing. Let me just make sure we can see this. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna close up. I'm gonna pump up. See how that's notching there? Okay, so you saw as it was capturing the brachial pulse, it was notching, okay? So now we're going, that gives you a way to kind of check your blood pressure while you're taking it and visually check it. So now what we want to do is add the hearing part of the blood pressure. So we put on our stethoscope, we make sure the ears are covered so that we have very good seal and we don't hear a lot of the surrounding um, environment. We put our, right where we have palpated that brachial artery, we put our stethoscope there. We never put the thumb over the stethoscope because that can have a natural pulse to it. Close up our blood pressure, hold our meter, and hold our stethoscope and pump up the blood pressure. Holding it and going nice and slow, listening. There we go, perfect. And then we release the blood pressure. check respirations while you're checking a pulse. You can do 15 seconds for a pulse and then 15 seconds more for respirations, just watching for chest rise. If you can't see chest rise, watch the belly going up and down, okay? And then we multiply that by four and that's your respirations. But we don't just note that. When we're taking a pulse and we're taking respirations, we know is it bounding pulse? Is it thready? Is it weak? Is it regular? Is it regular or is it irregular okay um, even our respirations are they breathing fast slow are they using their accessory muscles to breathe um, are they coughing a lot are there secretions so yes we're taking vital signs but there's also a lot around it okay and then we also assess the patient for pain what's your pain level zero being nothing ten being the worst pain you could think of and then the patient says, what's your pain level today? Two. A two, okay? And now you can say, what makes it worse? What makes it better? Is it, um, how would you describe the pain? Is it aching? Is it dull? Is it sharp? Um, again, maybe laying down feels better than sitting up. Going for a walk feels better. Um, putting on cream or taking a pill, uh, Tylenol, ibuprofen might help her, okay? 
okay? And that's all assessments that we as nurses can take on um, for, the, for the patient, okay? Heat therapy, cold therapy, absolutely, okay? So this was a brief video of vital signs. Thank you.